Well, good evening and welcome. I'm really glad you're all able to come this evening. And um, I had an opportunity to do this presentation uh, a little earlier to my award. And uh, just received a lot of really positive feedback. And some people said they wish they could hear it again. So we're going to give it a shot. Um, I always warn people I'm a little bit strange, uh, which is fine and good. I've always been a little bit out of the box. And I would say pursuit of truth has really been a guiding light in my life. And I found that sometimes that takes you into some very interesting places. But um, all of us are on a spiritual path in one way or another. And I don't know about you, but I can look back on experiences I had, and at the time they seemed insignificant. And yet, as I look back in retrospect, I see how important they were. Just a book or a comment or a speaker, just a thought can have a huge impact on one's direction. And so, as I reflected back, I had a chance to just really review some of these things and want to just share my path. Um, it was about a 25 year process. When I first learned about the church, it took about 25 years. Um, I was raised in Divine Science, which is New Thought Church, uh, similar to Unity, Christian Science, Science of Mind. And one of the beautiful things about that, those teachings is there is an emphasis on the inherent divinity of man. Man is made in the image and likeness of God. He has all the inherent qualities that the Creator has, and our, part of our purpose for being here on Earth is to grow into a realization of that, an experience, an expression of that divinity that we are, and to manifest that. And all these churches, all these approaches, teach that Jesus the Christ was the greatest expression of a God-realized being um, that ever lived, a, a fully realized Son of God. And so that's the process that we're involved in moving forward on. And it's a bit daunting sometimes, uh, a bit confusing sometimes, but I, I didn't particularly like church that much when I was growing up. I would not consider myself a spiritual person. I have friends that, I mean, when they were eight or nine or ten, they gave their life to Christ and, and had these amazing experiences, and I was not one of those people. Um, and I always tell my wife, I'm a little slow and I'm a little dense, but when I get it, I really do. And so I would say it was in my high school years that I started to wake up, or I would say something inside of me really started to stir. And I remember just looking at the world and becoming aware of the injustice and all the negative stuff that was going on. I had a pretty sheltered childhood. But it was, there was something inside of me that just felt, this is not right. This is not how it's supposed to be. This isn't the way the Creator intended it to be and I need to do something about it. And so I started in the way that I could. I thought politics might be a solution. It took a few years to figure out that it was not where the solution was, but nevertheless, as I look back, there was that part of me that saw a need to make a difference. And I know a lot of people um, have that, a similar experience. And so did that for several years and in my college years, I felt another stirring. And it was this growing realization that you can't change things on the outside. Things have to change on the inside first. And unless there's a change of heart, nothing's gonna change. The outer reality that we see is just a reflection of what's going on inside of people. And I was spending a lot of time trying to change other people, but I came to the realization that I was the one that needed change had to start here. And it was a gradual process, but I became more and more and more thirsty to the point where I need to know. And again, I started rejecting a lot of the things, the beliefs that I held sacred and maybe not sacred, but really important um, things that I used to defend and really believe in. It's like, yeah, maybe they're true, maybe they're not. But there's something higher, there's something deeper, there's something better, there's something more powerful. And again, this was waking up within me. And I was living with a group of friends, kind of on a path, 
Um, and as this waking up happened within, I had the experience of being picked up out of this group, dropped into a group of people that I hardly even knew, but my life just changed. And this new group of people, similar aspiration, similar point on the path. And so we started having these deep spiritual conversations, and one of these introduced me to a wonderful book called The Initiate. Uh, which I'm not even quite sure how to describe. It was just a person living in modern-day England who was really living and manifesting a spiritual life. Um, with those God-given inherent qualities that he had grown into realization and was living those. And one of the things that really connected with me in reading this book is it talked about unconditional love. And the way it was put and the examples that were given it wasn't just an intellectual concept that went in. It resonated with me to a depth where it's like, this is what I want. This is what I'm committing my life to. And it was so deep and so strong. And so that was kind of a guiding force. Um, again, didn't have a real strong interest in religion, but did have a strong interest in truth. Um, and that might be my own stuff going on in my head that doesn't match them up. But as this pull grew, um, you know, I found myself investigating different religions. And uh, having grown up in Christianity, I did go through the process of getting born again, gave my life to Christ. Very powerful experience. It was transformational. It was huge. Um, and at the same time, I mean, before that, I remember being, getting so thirsty and so dry and just crying out to God, I have to know you're there. If you're really there, show me. And I would see the thirst increased. And my pursuit and my exploration increased. But this giving my life to Christ was a very powerful experience for me. And at the same time, I, it, there was, it was done with a caveat. I have to know. Don't ask me to just be a believer and read and believe. I have to know. And again, this was something within me. And so I was living in Boulder, Colorado at the time. If you know anything about Boulder, it's a wonderful place and there is every spiritual trip under the sun there. And so I always had a Christ focus. Uh, went to some Bible study groups and pretty flat. Um, started ex exploring other paths, so meditated with the Buddhists, danced with the Sufis, and was just really exploring different approaches to truth. Christ centered within me, and yet looking for something that was really going to take me to a level to where I know. I ended up through a series of events, actually the new group of people that I was hanging out with, uh, also knew some people that were following this guru, thought I would check it out. I mean, it was kind of interesting, but didn't really resonate at first, but I just kind of tagged along, and little by little I started to understand that there are processes, there are meditation techniques, there are ways to really take one into a deeper experience of the divinity that they are. And this is a whole other story in itself, but to make a long story short, I ended up following this guru for uh, several years, um, got the meditation techniques, did them diligently, hour in the morning, hour in the evening, um, whole spiritual discipline around this. And I remember one of the things that he said that really touched me, um, you know, when I first started becoming exposed, and this really kind of endeared me to his teachings, and he said, you know, Christians are waiting for Jesus to return. But one of the things they don't realize is he never left. And that's something that really resonated with me. It's like, well, of course, if you have Christ living within you, he's there. And there is a genuine experience of that. And so I think that one of the other beautiful things about this path and this teaching was he incorporated Christianity and teachings of Buddhism and teachings of Hinduism and distilling Here's the golden thread of truth that runs through all these different spiritual paths.
past. But I had some incredibly profound experiences practicing knowledge, doing these meditation techniques. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this drive to experience unconditional love. I had an experience of unconditional love that blew me away. And it's not something my mind could create. It's not something I imagined. It was a, an amazing download. And at the same time, I know it was just a little taste, but it was, it was a gift. And it was an answer to the prayer. Um, and it completely or reoriented my way of understanding God and God's love. Um, I also had an experience of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Um, one of the things that we did on this path was we had these spiritual festivals. And I remember being at one, and there were 23,000 people here from 56 different countries. And you have all this diversity and all these different backgrounds. And there are these people that have this commitment to truth and are doing these meditation techniques. And the light and the energy and the love that was in this group was amazing. And I remember leaving. I was on a bus going to the airport and just starting to cry. It's like, oh no, I have to go back. And there was an experience of the kingdom of heaven on earth, and it's beautiful. Um, so that was a very powerful experience, powerful part of my path, and I still do the meditation techniques, and I'm incredibly thankful for them. Uh, fast forward a few years, around 1980, um, I invited uh, a naturopathic doctor to come speak in Colorado. He was talking about, he had some wonderful insights on health, and heard great things about him, you know, read a little bit of his stuff, and um, got together a pretty good audience for him. And this gentleman was traveling around to 200 cities a year, roughly, um, giving this, this health presentation, and he was doing it on a donation basis. And to me, that was pretty remarkable that somebody would walk their talk, and his belief was this is, if something is priceless, then you can't charge for it. You do it on a donation basis, and that's what he did. And I found it pretty amazing that somebody could do that. But uh, when he was in Colorado, he stayed with us uh, for a few days, and he was LDS, and after the health presentations, we had these deep, rich, wonderful discussions. I'm always up for spiritual adventure. I always love learning about people's paths and what took them and how they got there and what their experiences are. I'm less interested in what people believe. I'm really interested in what they experience. And so, this is a little of both. Uh, but this gentleman was walking his talk and, and living his truth. And so we stayed up late, and he just started sharing some of his stuff because I was really curious, and I'd heard about Mormons but didn't really know anything. And just about everything he talked about, it's like, well, I already believe that. You know, he shared a little bit about the preexistence, and it's like, well, of course. You know, you did not come into being at conception. <laughs> you lived before, you came into a physical body, you have experiences, and you will continue to live after you leave your physical body. So that was a belief that I already had. Uh, when he told me the story of the first vision, um, that was very easy to believe. And maybe I'm naive and gullible, but my thought was, well, of course. God has manifested himself throughout the ages or sent prophets to impart new truths to humanity uh, when they're ready, and it's tailored towards the, the time and the culture that he's in, that it's in. But, of course, God would come to restore what had fallen away. And I came to my own conclusions a long time ago that what Jesus taught and what the church had turned into were two different things. And, you know, you can look at history through their attempts at reformation and to try to get things back on track. Um, but I didn't have any problem with the belief, you know, apostasy wasn't even in my vocabulary. I didn't even know what that meant. You know, that the church fell away. Well, yeah, of course. And 
here is the, the restoration. Here's somebody coming to help restore it to the original truth and teachings that Jesus gave. So that was, again, right in line with what I believed, um, or understood to, to one degree or another. Um, eternal progression, you know, we already touched on that. You exist before you come into a body, you're in a body, and this growth, this progression, this spiritual evolution, it's eternal. It continues. We're always growing more. You don't die and go play a harp forever. Thank goodness. Um, you know, he also talked about, you know, we believe in the scriptures as they're correctly translated. And again, that's always a bit of a problem that I had. It's like, well, yeah, I think the, the essence of the truth is there, but um, there are maybe a lot of things that were left out. And so um, I would say my exploration and pursuit of, of other religions clarified some truths. Um, it was interesting having another angle on some of the teachings that Jesus had. Um, you read um, the Apocrypha, some of the other writings of Thomas. Um, and so the, the teaching that yes, we believe in the scriptures, but they're, you know, we take into account there may be some translation issues. So again, that really resonated with me. Um, everyone gets a chance to hear the gospel and accept it. And this is a little bit of a problem that I had with a lot of Christianity. Um, depending on the path you've been or where you've been, you may or may not have experienced this, but I did. If you don't believe, except Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, you are going to burn in hell forever. Well, gee, what about the people that came before Jesus was here? Too bad, they're out of luck. What about people that were born in China or some remote part of the earth and they ne never had a chance to hear about Christ? They're going to burn in hell forever. Um, oh, yes, and we worship a just, loving God. Um, to me, that just didn't quite fit. And so to learn that everybody's going to have a chance. Everybody has an opportunity. So if they don't hear it while they're in a body, they're going to have a chance to learn about it and accept it later on. So knowing that God is a loving Father, there's always a way for His children to get home. Um, pursuit of truth, no matter the source. And this really rang dear to me because I would say that this is my path. Pursue truth wherever it goes. And again, my experience has been it can take you into some pretty interesting places. But there is a golden thread of truth that runs through all major religions. And if you look at the major religions on the outside, you see a lot of difference. But the deeper you go into the essence of what they are, the more similarities that you find. And so to run into a church that taught we embrace truth wherever we find it, that's really rare. Because most of the religions I've run across say, we have it all and you have to come to us to get it. And certainly there is a core teaching here, but there is an openness to explore truth in other places. So to me, that was like, wow, I, I haven't run across that anywhere else. Um, personal revelation. You don't need a priest as an intermediary between you and God. You can have your own personal revelation. You do the work, you walk the path, you do your prayer, you do your meditation, you do your scripture studies, you aspire, you live the laws, and you will have your own revelation. You will know. Um, and then bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. Um, as I looked back, this is what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for in politics. There's a way for everybody to have enough. The world can work for everybody. But it has to happen from the inside out. And so I had little tastes of that along the path, as I mentioned with this festival and some other experiences that I had. But to have a church that has a commitment to bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth and living a Christ-like life and living that and manifesting it was really, really cool. And 
so I got a really good, I would say, intellectual understanding of what the church is all about. Um, all these things just really rang true, but I did not feel any pull to join. I was pretty happy with the path I was on. Um, it was pretty fulfilling at the time, but this was a wonderful introduction. And so time passed. Um, every year I would run into Mormons here and there in one way or another through business or whatever. And we would always have good conversations. And I think one of the things that I really valued was they were conversations of exploring truth and sharing one's path. I never felt like I was trying to be recruited. I never felt I was trying to be converted. I probably was, but I never really felt that. And so having someone respect where I was and respect my path and respect my experiences, again, that's pretty unique because I've been around enough people where if you share something that's a little bit out of alignment with their beliefs, oh no, that's wrong, oh no, that's wrong. Didn't experience this. And I know other people, I mean, I have friends that have had very difficult situations with um, the church. They felt judged, and that's their experience. But for me, um, it was always mutual respect and an opportunity to share. So that happened over time. And then um, in the early 90s, um, one of the things I was doing, I had a team of professional athletes, and we traveled around doing high-performance living programs, uh, self-esteem building, drug prevention. But just really believe in yourself, and we're teaching the principles of success and physical, emotional, mental health. And we did this really cool trampoline performance, and that got kids' attention, and then wove the message into the act, and then the classroom follow-ups afterwards and whatnot. But we had an invitation to present for the Utah Federation for Drug for Youth. We were the keynote presenters. And so when I was talking to the meeting planner, I said, well, you can either put us up in a hotel, that's fine, or we're happy to stay with the family. And so she arranged, um, she arranged for us to stay with the family. We lived up in Kaysville, a little bit north of Salt Lake City. And I remember when we got there, we were unloading, you know, they came out to greet us, and I picked up my baggages, and I was carrying it into their house. And I walked in the door to their house, and I went, holy cow, there is something really special here. I could feel it. And we stayed with them for about five or six days, did, a number, did the keynote, and then we presented it schools. But we had some amazing conversations, deep discussions, deep sharing, but even more than the information that was imparted was the way these people lived and was the energy I felt in their home and was the interaction I saw with their kids. Um, and it, it really, really touched me. And this, it hit something inside of me that hadn't been touched before. Um, I will always treasure that experience. And, you know, learned about the plan of salvation. I mean, we, we shared some thoughts and whatnot, went to church with them. Um, loved it. And again, it, it really connected. And I remember telling my partner as we were driving home, I said, you know, if I ever join a church, it would probably be the Mormon church. But since I don't do organized religion, that will never happen. Have an aversion to organized religion. Um, but that was a very deep, powerful experience. And so, continued to run into Mormons, have these exchanges. But this seed that was planted, little by little, was growing. Um, when I was living in Colorado, I invited some missionaries to come sh share the lessons. And, um, you know, they were interesting. I probably didn't hear anything that I hadn't already heard before. Um, thank them for their time and, you know, again, didn't feel a draw to join or to pursue it anymore. Well, I did go to church a couple times. Um, you know, I was with a meditation group for a number of years. Again, I was following my path of meditation and study uh, just a variety of different sources um, and really working 
working on that inner connection, knowing from within. Um, but I would say that seed continued to grow. Uh, I moved to Utah in 2001 to work with a holistic healing organization. And surprise, surprise, I'm surrounded by Mormons. And so again, we had some wonderful talks and I can think of a couple that was more the way they lived their life. They embodied the teachings in a very wonderful, practical way. And so it continued to grow when I started sensing this inner draw, like there's really something here. There's really something powerful and deep here. And I don't know what it is. So I started going to church, um, had some missionary lessons again, second time through. Um, and again, it's like, I have the information, I hear this, but it doesn't match with what I'm feeling inside. And I really have to know what this is. And so that kept getting stronger and stronger and deeper and bigger and more powerful. Um, and, I, and I thought about joining, you know, on several occasions. But it's almost like I didn't have an internal go-ahead. Um, and for me, this was a big thing. It wasn't just joining. Um, this is something I'm committing my life to. And I had already done that several times. And I would say the path has evolved. Taking those teachings and experiences with me. But things evolved, and I ended up going through a very intense, difficult emotional experience. And I would say, in some ways, it was a spiritual crisis. And that is part of our path. Um, if you're walking a spiritual path, you will go through a spiritual crisis. And this was a breaking down. And I don't really like the breaking process, I understand why it's necessary. Um, and that's what was happening. And it was incredibly painful. But I was sitting in meditation one morning, and I had an audible voice and almost a physical impression, it's time for you to join the church. Okay? No problem. So I got up, went in, called the bishop, and um, set an appointment. This is a Friday morning. I remember this very well. And so we had an appointment uh, the next evening, Saturday night. And um, I was looking forward to that. And um, I mean, it was nice to have confirmation, and yet I was still going through this really deep, intense, ah! And I remember saying, okay, I have to know. I have to know. Show me. Show me. And so I just picked up a Book of Mormon, and I opened it, and went, boom! What do I need? And it was Third Nephi, Chapter 11, verse 22 or 23. And it said, you must be baptized in my name. And I read a few verses, and in a few verses, it went from baptism to I am in the Father, the Father is in me, I and the Father are one. At one minute. Which is something that over time has become very near and dear to me. At one moment with Christ, at one moment with God. Here it was, just, okay, I got it. And so the next evening, that Saturday evening, I went in to visit with the bishop. I said, you know, here's what's happened. Um, this is the experience I had in meditation. I know that this is my next step. Um, and I know you guys have been trying really hard to get me. <laughs> and I got the internal go-ahead, which is, in retrospect, I was, I was waiting for that. Um, and then I also said, you know, I have a strong background in Eastern religion. I love it. The truth there is wonderful. It's enriched my life so much. I studied esoteric sciences. I studied a lot of different spiritual approaches. And I can't not know what I know. And so if I join, this comes with me. I'm not going to advertise it, but this, this is the experience, and this is what has brought me to this point, and these are some of the realizations that I've had. And he just shared something that uh, President Hinckley said earlier, to the effect that everybody comes from a different background. Bring your goodness and share it. And so 
again, it wasn't like, well, here's the do's and don'ts, you have to do this, and here's all the things you have to believe. It's like, bring your goodness, share it, and we have a lot to offer. And so I said, well, I'm, I'm in. Um, well, let's do it. And he said, well, when would you like to be baptized? And I said, next Sunday is Easter. Let's do it next Sunday. And he said, well, we've got to go through the missionary lesson. And I said, I've been through them twice. Fine. Set them up. <laughs> I just told the bishop, set it up. I want to be baptized on Easter. So every night at his house, we had the missionary discussions and the lessons. And um, I still had some questions and things that's like, didn't quite sit right, but you know, that's, that was irrelevant. And I was just like, be quiet, Michael, just nod your head, say yes. Um, just go, this is what I know I'm supposed to do. And so at the end of these lessons, the missionaries came up and said, you're the easiest convert we've ever had. <laughs> and I didn't tell them about the other missionaries that bombed out. <laughs> So I'm glad I could be an easy one for them. So I did get baptized on Easter Sunday. It was a wonderful experience. Um, I would say I was still going through the spiritual crisis, but um, I was where I needed to be and I knew it. And I didn't agree with everything and I don't think that's necessary. And my experience has been there is something here that is so deep and so rich and so good. And we get caught up in the details of believe this, don't believe that, different interpretations. And boy, my suggestion to anybody who's on this path is go deeper. Go into the essence of what it is. And it's a lot deeper than doctrine teachings or anything else. At least that's been my experience. And that's what... Um, you know, it's funny because um, I remember before I was baptized reading this book, uh, The Godmakers. Um, and I also had friends that were talking about, look, we have the fullness of the gospel. And so, yes, we have the fullness of the gospel. Okay, I get that. I believe that. Um, but I remember reading, you know, some other anti-Mormon literature. And it's like, well, Mormons believe this, and it's kind of like, Eastern and it's Hindu and this is Buddhist and they have some ties to Masonic and all this other stuff. And here's why they're a cult and here's why they're bad. And they're not Christian. And my experience was pursuit of truth. If you have the fullness, you're going to pick truth out of every teaching that there is. And there's a lot of good, rich teaching in those other approaches and paths. So to me, that was a huge plus. And so you can have a teaching that's here, but this is much bigger. Uh, there's a beautiful saying that the greater includes the lesser, not so the reverse. And I think that's really true of this teaching in this path. I found it very inclusive, very universal, very broad. And again, I know people that have had experiences that are just the opposite. Um, but I'm thankful that this has been my path. Um, so I still continue with my meditation group that I've been with. Um, a month after I was baptized, I spent seven days with the Dalai Lama. That was an amazing experience. And uh, one of the things that I remembered about that was one evening, we, there was a, an event and they had people from all these different spiritual paths. They had the Archbishop of Toronto, this event was held in Toronto. Um, you know, the head of the Episcopal Church and another couple of Buddhist sects, a Hindu, Sikh, um, rabbi, Muslim imam. And it was really cool seeing the Muslim imam and the rabbi sitting together and all these people up here. And they all got up and they shared their experience. And it wasn't, we believe this and we believe that. What came through was the love of God that each of these men had. And you could feel the love in this huge heart. And there is a unity. There is a deeper truth that all of these religions share and all of these different paths. And for me, right now my path is LDS. And I love what's here. I love what the church
church stands for. I love the humanitarian efforts. And for me, it is a real privilege to be part of something so big and so good and having the freedom to pursue truth wherever I find it. So thank you for coming this evening. I really enjoyed being here and having the chance to share this process with you again. Good night.